Our conclusion here on First News Forum with State Senator J. Paul Gum. Uh, we're talking Nick's law before the break. Let's let's back up for those that that may have been under a rock. What what exactly is Nick's law? It has to do with with autistic children or just uh, those with autism and insurance coverage. But what does that mean exactly? Simply put, it would require that every health insurance policy in the state of Oklahoma cover early diagnosis and treatment of autism. Uh, it, has a, it has a cap in it, and, and, and the reason it's so important is the, that early diagnosis and treatment is the best way to ensure these kids have a chance to have a full and happy life. We, we know the, uh, the therapies work, uh, but they're so doggone expensive that most fa they're beyond the reach of most families, and, and this would simply require that health insurance cover it, like we require health insurance to cover a number of things. It is a bioneurological disorder. It's not a developmental disability. And, and absolutely, without a doubt, should be covered by health insurance. What's the opposition in the House? I uh, know that they hung up in the committee. The right. committee refused to, to even consider it. Uh, what's the reasoning behind that, or what are they telling you? Is it because uh, it would break insurance companies? Is that is that the answer that, that's been given? Oh, is... no, no. The insurance, it would never hurt the insurance companies. What it will do will increase the cost of insurance and drive up the number of uninsured Oklahomans. That's their argument. But mm -hmm. if you do the research and you, and you look at states that have more insu health insurance mandates on the books, mm -hmm. uh, a good number of them in those same states, health insurance is less than Oklahoma. For their argument to hold water, uh, every state that has more health insurance mandates on the books than Oklahoma should have higher health insurance rates than Oklahoma. That's not the case. And as a matter of fact, the case, uh, the, the state in the lower 48 with the highest cost of living, California, more insurance mandates. Mm -hmm. You would think their insurance would cost more in California than in Oklahoma. It doesn't. It's actually less. So uh, their argument doesn't hold water. It's one of those things where if you tell uh, tell this myth over and over and over, it develops a truth of its own, and that's their argument against it. Now, um, we provided actuarial studies. It shows that the cost would be at most a dollar sixty-six a month, mm -hmm. uh, and in, in a number of states, Texas included, which has a version of Nick's law on the book. Uh, the insurance regulatory agency here in Texas tells us there has been no increase in health insurance costs because of their version of Nick's law, their health insurance uh, autism mandate. So their argument doesn't hold water, but they're hanging, they're, they're hanging on to it as, as best they can. They did a number of interim studies where they were trying to alleviate the political pressure on this, uh, but we're going to continue to advocate for this because it's just simply the right thing to do. You have the votes in the Senate. You have, you believe you have the votes in the House if it would get through which committee specifically? Well, the committee structure in the House may very well change with okay. the new leadership as well, but it was uh, the uh, Economic and Financial Services Committee. At which, the time, this last session. Which is, in essence, the insurance committee. Okay. Uh, and uh, Representative Ron Peterson refused to give it a hearing. Uh, now, Representative Peterson will not be an impediment any longer because he chose not to seek re-election. Mm -hmm. uh, he still had term limit time left and decided to, uh, after last session that he was not going to seek another term. So, uh, But Speaker Chris Binge, who will be Speaker again, uh, backed him up and mm -hmm. said, not only will, will that committee not hear it, we won't give it a hearing on the floor because there were a lot of options we had to get the bill to the House floor directly. And he said, we're not even going to hear it if you do that. So. Uh, it, it is the Republican leadership in the House, and, and it's the very sad part about that is uh, the Oklahoma House of Representatives is the only place in the United States where an autism insurance bill became partisan. In Louisiana, it passed the Louisiana legislature unanimously. Mm -hmm. uh, it was advocated by a Republican state representative from Baton Rouge, signed into law by a Republican governor. Uh, Florida, uh, passed through Republican House and Senate, was signed into law by a Republican governor. Pennsylvania, it was carried by a Republican Speaker of the House, passed uh, a state Senate, uh, I think it was uh, with only one dissenting vote, signed by a Democratic governor. Mm -hmm. So you've seen this issue cross party lines everywhere except the Oklahoma House of Representatives. In the state Senate, we had Republicans who stepped up and voted for it. And, and, and you know, there can be honest disagreement on this. The tragedy was that, that they used their power to prevent it from even being heard. They said no to literally hundreds of mommies and daddies who came to that Capitol to advocate for it. And, I remember and the you had several, or well, more than one, but uh, one of the events was well attended. Absolutely. Quite a few people there. And, and for some of these families, this was their first really attempt to have an impact in state government and they walked away with a pretty bad taste in their mouth and, and mm -hmm. with a lot of anger toward those who wouldn't give them a hearing and they should have.
Uh, We're not sent up there to say no to everybody. Uh, And if you're going to say no, let's have the debate first. That's what that building was built for. There wasn't even a debate. No, it wasn't even a debate in the House. With about a minute and a half left, national political scene, a change in the state of Oklahoma and a change in Washington. Certainly. Your thoughts on uh, Tuesday, November 4th and the outcome? Well, it uh, it wasn't a big surprise. Uh, The Democratic gains in both the House of Representatives and the United States Senate were not a big surprise. The fact that that Senator Obama was elected president uh, by such a healthy electoral majority was not a big surprise. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's going to mean some changes in in regulatory policy that uh, could be interesting for Oklahoma. Uh, I think probably the biggest change for Oklahoma is that the stock of U.S. Congressman Dan Boren just went way up right. because he's the only nationally elected Democrat in the state of Oklahoma and he will have the ability to have enormous impact on appointments within the state of Oklahoma that will come out of the Obama administration. And for a casual observer of politics like me, Dan Bourne seems to be well liked across the state and across party lines. Is Dan's, that the case? Dan's a great congressman, good guy, good staff and uh, you know my district uh, Four of my five counties are in his district, and one in, in, in Representative Coles in Congressman Coles' okay. district. So I, I've got uh, two very good congressmen that I work with on a regular basis, and that both have very good field staff. So, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, uh, Congressman Bourne in this new role, and it's, and it's going to be good for Eastern Oklahoma and for the majority of rural Oklahoma because he is a very rural district, and uh, and for him to have that kind of influence is going to be very important for for our area and really for the entire state. Never thought of that at all. Never thought of Congressman Dan Bourne being a, being a factor possibly. He's going to be a big factor now. We're smooth out of time. State Senator Jay Paul Gum, thanks so much for coming by. Always Enjoyed like it. having you here on First News Forum. Ten seconds left. We'll say good morning for now and we'll see you back here next week. Stay with us here throughout the day on First News. A lot of football later on as well. And we'll see you tonight for First News Weekend Edition.